Hi everybody, welcome to your weekly dose. My name is Lauren and I'm part of the visitor engagement team here at the Calgary Zoo. Today, I am inside Canadian wilds at one of the most incredible habitats, the mountain, which is home to our herd of mountain goats. Today on our weekly dose, we are gonna learn a little bit more about this amazing Canadian icon species, as well as a little bit about the habitats that you might find them in. When you first come into Canadian wilds, you will turn up the incredible rocky slopes of the mountain, but you might not see the mountain goats right away. That's because we actually have up to three different habitats that our animal care team can use to manage the dynamics of this herd. So you might find them in different spaces throughout the year, either seasonally or based on if we have any babies. This incredibly complex herd actually has an adult male, Yukon, two adult females, Amanda and Shannon, four yearlings, Cypress, Niagara, Winston and Sprout, and this year's two newest additions who don't have names yet. Because this herd is a complex and ever-changing thing, our animal care teams will utilize the different habitats in different ways. So right now in the first mountain goat habitat, you'll find the four yearlings as well as Yukon. And then you'll find Amanda and Shannon, our nanny goats, with the Asir's mountain goat kids in the second habitat. This allows for some amazing time for bonding between moms and new kids. Throughout the year, we'll also see those combinations of goats change depending on if there's breeding season or if there are other social dynamics within the herd to be aware of. This is a really amazing management tool for our animal care colleagues to be able to both offer different habitats to the goats as a form of enrichment, as well as manage the different social dynamics within this ever-changing herd. Let's talk a little bit more about a herd. What does that mean? It is so much more than just a group of animals that live together. Herding behavior is a complex social interaction, which we see around the world in many different herbivore species, including zebras, camels, giraffes, and the herd plays a very important role for a herbivore. Herbivores are often the prey animals to carnivores, and your odds of being eaten by a carnivore increase a lot if you live alone, because when you have safety in numbers, the odds of you being eaten, they go down when there's lots of different animals for that predator to choose from. It also does make it harder for the predator to find you at all, because when the herd is moving together, it's much more difficult for those carnivores, those predator animals, to pick out one individual from the herd. So when the herd is together, they can communicate. If anybody senses that a predator is coming and they can move the herd off together. We see that in species like white-tailed deer, where one will give a signal and the whole herd will move. Herd behavior also allows those youngest animals, those mountain goat kids, zebra foals, giraffe calves, to learn from the adults. And we have a generational transfer of knowledge between different individuals. So as the herd is complex and ever-changing, the knowledge of where to find food, where to find shelter, seasonality of things like rain or flood or hail, those are things that the herd can learn together. We'll also see this kind of complex group behavior mirrored in carnivores. We just call it something different. It's called packing behavior. And you'll see that in wolves, lions, even dinosaurs did packing behavior. And these two types of group dynamics have evolved in correlation with each other. So just as there's safety in numbers for the prey animals, there's also more success in numbers for the predators. Herd behavior is incredibly complex. There's all kinds of unique little pieces that come together to create this really unique social group. And here in our care at the Calgary Zoo, it's important that we manage that and care for our herd species in ways that are biologically appropriate and are also have the best interest and social needs for our goats or our other herd species. Thank you so much for tuning into this edition of the Weekly Dose. Next up on your Weekly Dose at home, Scotty is exploring hooves and how these fantastic feet help these amazing iconic Canadian species adapt to their mountain habitats. Thanks for tuning in, catch you on the next Weekly Dose and thank you for supporting wildlife conservation.